Static data tables can be created in either Power Query, Power Pivot in Excel, or the Power Pivot data model in Power BI. And they're suitable for tables that contain parameters or values that rarely, if ever, change. And the benefit is that they allow you to reduce the number of data connections that your file needs to refresh. Phil's going to take you through the various ways you can create them. Ordinarily, when you want to create a table in Power Query, Power Pivot, or Power BI, you'd write a query to load it from an external source, like an Excel workbook, CSV file, a database, or whatever. But any time you have data that won't change, or changes rarely, you can use a static table. That is, a table that doesn't need a data source, it's created directly inside Power Query or the data model. For example, you might have a table which can be used to calculate bonus amounts when certain sales thresholds are met. This threshold column is the dollar value of sales you need to reach in order to get a bonus, which is calculated by multiplying that threshold value by the rate. Such data is only used for reference slash calculation, so there's really no need to load it from an external source. I'm going to show you how to create tables in Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power BI without loading any data. The first method uses the intrinsic function hash table in Power Query. Second, we'll load data into Power Pivot. Then I'll use the Enter Data button on the ribbon in Power BI Desktop. Then look at the table constructor in DAX. And finally, the data table function in DAX. Let's get started. There are a number of ways to create a table in Power Query using functions like table.fromList, table.fromColumns, and other similar functions. But the way that I find most flexible and use the most often is the hash table function. I'm already in Excel, so let's open the Power Query editor, start a new blank query, and then open the advanced editor. The syntax to create a table with hash table is this. I'll just paste it in and then explain what it's doing. You start with the hash table function name, then the top section declares that we're creating a table. These are the column names and the data type of the columns. And the second section supplies the data for the columns that we've just declared. Let's fill these in and create the bonus rates table I showed you earlier. Our first column name is threshold. The data type is integer. Our second column name is called rate. And this is going to be a floating point or a decimal, which in Power Query is just number. Then for our values, each line in this section is a row and each value represents the value in that column. So the threshold of zero and the rate zero. I'll just fill the rest of these in and speed up the video. I'm done creating the table, so just click on the done button and there's our table. If I ever need to change anything, I'll just go back into the editor and make the change. With Power Pivot, it's as easy as pasting in the data. Here's the data I want to use to create the table, so let's copy this first. Open up Power Pivot, and because I've already copied data, the Paste button is available, so all I need to do is click on Paste, give the table a name. Yes, I do want to use first row as headers, so click OK, and there's my table. Close Power Pivot. If I insert a pivot table, and choose Use This Workbook's Data Model. You'll see that I have the table over here ready to be used. Of course, at this stage, I haven't got any other tables, measures, or relationships in the model, but you can see how easy it is to create a static table in Power Pivot. In Power BI Desktop, there's a button on the ribbon called Enter Data. Clicking on this brings up this dialog where you can type in the data, giving your column names as you go, if you do make a mistake, you can delete the rows or the columns. And like Power Pivot, you can paste in data that you've previously copied. So let's grab that data from Excel again. Copy that back to Power BI. Select the top of column one and paste. And that's our table. Give it a name. Click load. Power BI does its thing. And if we go into Power Query to just check what we've got, 
you can see there's our table. You'll notice that the columns don't have the correct data type though, so we need to change that. And if I open up the advanced editor just to see what we've got in the query, you'll see that the table is stored as an encoded compressed JSON document and this can't be edited. So if you use this approach and need to change anything, you'll have to start over. Just while I'm in the Power Query Editor, note that I can also enter data from in here. I can close and apply just to close this down and then we can check in the data model at the table is there. And there it is. The next thing I'm going to look at is using the DAX table constructor. So in the data view, click on new table. And this is the syntax for the table constructor. The entire table is surrounded by curly braces. Each line is a row in the table with rows of data surrounded by parentheses or brackets and each row is separated by a comma. The number of columns is determined by the number of values in each row. For more columns, just add more values to each line. To create the bonus rates table that we're using as an example, change the name of the table, then replace the values. There isn't any way to name the columns when constructing the table in this way. By default, if there is only one column, that column is called value. If there is more than one column, they're called value one, value two, and so on. If I press enter to commit the change and the table is created, we can come over here, double click the name of the column and rename it that way. The data type of the column is determined by the data you enter. The threshold column is whole number and rate is decimal. If you have a column of mixed data types, then the entire column is converted to a common data type. If I change this last row so that column one contains a text value, then you'll notice that the threshold column now becomes text. One useful feature of the table constructor is that the values in the table can be the result of any DAX expression that returns a scalar value, that is a single value. So when using this method, you can refer to columns or measures in other tables and use those as the values in your table. Okay, let's delete this and then move on to the last method, which is the data table function. Again, click on new table. The syntax for data table is similar to the hash table in Power Query. First, you have the table name then equals, then you call the data table function. The first section is where you name the columns and say what the type of data will be in those columns. The second section is where you supply the data and this defines the number of rows in the table, one row for each line. So as before, I'm gonna recreate the bonus rates table by entering the data here. Change the table name. My first column is called threshold. In DAX, the data types are different to Power Query, so this column is type integer. My second column is called rate, and this has the data type double. And I'll just paste in the values for the columns because you've seen this before. Press enter, and my table gets created. The columns already have the names that I want, so that saves us a step compared to using the table constructor. Okay, so I've shown you five different ways to create tables in Power Query and DAX that allow you to get data into your model without needing to load it from a data source. Well, I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.